everyone, and welcome to another episode of 1923 Main Street. Home of the Disney Travel Podcast with the latest Disney Travel news. We are your hosts. I am Mike Bella Braddock. And I'm Amelia Bella Braddock. And today, new princesses are back at Magic Kingdom. And what's coming for the Flower and Garden Festival this year? Are they really new princesses? Or uh, <laughs> Not necessarily, but they're coming back. They are coming back. And I think... New this year. Yes, new this year. All right, I'll let you go with that one. These, in my opinion, are two of the very best Disney princess greetings at Walt Disney World. Definitely Magic Kingdom. Even better than Princess Fairytale Hall, which is pretty good. Although, is one of them a greeting? We can debate that. However, what is coming back... Ariel is back at her grotto, starting right now and continuing onward. And Belle will be back at Maurice's cottage and sharing Enchanted Tales starting February 19th. Yes, so Enchanted Tales with Belle. If you have not done this, you must do it. It is totally amazing. And this is the one I said, is it really a greeting, even though I'm calling it a greeting? Well, that depends (laughs) on if you're a lucky one. If you're a little one there's a pretty good chance it's going to be a greeting for you. So Enchanted Tales with Belle, here's how it works. It takes place in Maurice's cottage, which is really cool because you actually go inside the cottage and you see where Belle grew up and sort of her measurements on the wall. And then there's a really, really, really cool magical effect that you, well, I won't even tell you exactly what it is, but they did sort of copy it's kinda, it. I was going to say, think Cosmic Rewind. No, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, yeah. I think is a closer one. True. But anyway, you enter, and the whole theme of this attraction, it's more of an attraction, not just a meet and greet, right? And you go in, and ultimately what's happening is you are part of a group surprising Belle with a story, sort of act out a story with her. And what happens is certain people get selected to play a part. We've talked about this way back on this show because we've done this quite a few times. And Amelia was lucky to get selected both times. So was I, actually. If you're a dad, you're probably going to be one of Belle's guards. So we don't do a lot. But but hey, we're on the stage. So you're either on the stage or you're in the audience. But you generally, if you're on the stage, you will meet Belle. But I have officially retired from this attraction. After one of my experiences, I've, I'm not going back. I will just call it even. Why? Because how could I ever top that? That was your first one. You did. So here's yeah. the key. If you've never done this and you're in line and you get picked to be the beast. When Amelia was little, she was saying, I don't want to be the beast. And I'm saying, Amelia, you want to be the beast. The beast is the star of the show and they will pick a little girl for it. They're not picky. Unfortunately. In that way. No, what do you mean? Unfortunately, you get to dance with Belle. So the beast That's true. the beast is the primary role in the whole play. That's the one you want to be in the story. Yeah, that's the one who gets the most face time with Belle. Yeah. So on stage. If you have a crying five year old girl who doesn't want to be a boy, just reassure them that they will get a good amount of time spent with the princesses. So it is worth it, even if they are initially a little bit hesitant about that. So it is a really good one, Enchanted Tales with Belle. Definitely worth doing. Highly recommended. And even just watching the show in the audience is great because it's a really, really cool room. Like very well lit. Great photos in there. Small audience too. It's not a gigantic. It's not like the laugh floor where it's a huge audience or even the old Ariel, which is now closed at Hollywood Studios. Very small, very sort of personal little room. So definitely do Enchanted Tales with Belle. Really glad that one's coming back. Amelia doesn't want to do it again, but I think we're going to make her. (laughs) We've never, you and I, have never sat in the audience. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to start now. I just want to say, yeah, I have always been picked. I'm that amazing. So we'll, (laughs) we'll have to see. And then the other one coming back, as you mentioned, is Ariel at her grotto. This is a really nice meet and greet location, I think. The setting is very good. All of the actors here that do it are top notch. So I I like this one. Yeah, I like it too. It's right beside her ride in Magic Kingdom in Fantasyland. I was almost going to say New Fantasyland, as it was called for a while. This was one of the things added in 2012 when they redid Fantasyland. That's ages ago. Yeah, I know. Ten years ago now. More than that. Wow. And it is a pretty cool setting because you do it's sep- right beside the ride, but totally separate, separate line, all that stuff. And you get to go right into her grotto in the rocks in the cave, and she's sitting on sort of a rock throne. So really, really cool one as well. That's why I think these are two very unique ones. They're not just 
princesses standing in a room as the other ones are, which are fine too. I mean, the room at Princess Fairytale Hall was well done. Yeah. Also redone around It's just that nice time. to switch things up a little bit so not all of your photos are of the same vein. Yeah, and the ambiance of both of these is very unique to the princesses themselves. That's what I'm getting at. So really, really good. And they're both going to be part of Genie Plus, which uh, wasn't, I don't think are. that was the case. I can't remember if it was before or not. But now no you can one book would. them. Like before, no one would book them as a fast pass. So I'm assuming that, as we mentioned in the past, that means you're going to get your photos, uh, your photo pass photos for free if you have fast pass for, because these are attractions. That was something that they added as a perk we talked about last week, I think. If you have fast pass? Oh, sorry. If you, <laughs> if you buy Genie Plus service, you will get your Disney attraction photo pass photos complimentary so and now these are both part of that service so you will get your photos now that is the first good news and amelia's favorite news all about her favorite festival at all of walt disney world yes coming up soon beginning march 1st and running through july 5th wow that's a long time yeah epcot cannot go without a festival the f- epcot international flower and garden festival 2023 everyone Hold on to your hats because it's starting again. Everyone's favorite March festival. It's very beautiful. The butterflies, the flowers, the food, the drinks. Even though it's technically not food and wine, there is food. It's basically wine. become sort of all these things are blended into They're one. They're the same festival. One sort of festival with tweaked themes. They are the same festival. Yeah, they pretty much are. So they haven't released the Garden Rocks concert series yet. That's what I want to hear. That's what everybody wants to hear. So we can see who's there when we're there. But they will have some new topiaries. These will include Mirabel, Antonio, Isabella, and Luisa from Encanto. I noticed Bruno's not there. Yeah. Well, we don't talk about Bruno. Yes. So Interesting. Yes. And you can find these near the main Epcot entrance and as well as a new Princess Tiana topiary. And this will be at the American Adventure Pavilion. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah. So new topiaries. And in addition to, you know, flowers and music... As we said, there's also food, so there will be 15 outdoor kitchens for 2023, including a brand new spot for the Citrus Blossom, which is a good booth. I like that booth. Now, what you're all waiting for. We will be doing a foodie guide. (laughs) Yes. And as well as, it would not be a festival without merch. So over on the merch side, you can watch for some official 70s inspired Orange Bird merch, including like apparel, headwear, drinks, All of the things Disney will be providing opportunities for you to buy. And then, in addition to the merch you can buy, they also have their own scavenger hunt. Yes. Spike's Pollen Nation. Get it? Pollen Nation. (laughs) Spike's Pollen Nation Exploration. It is back this year. So he will be collecting nectar and pollinating gardens at epcot which is basically you can find him in each garden on your map and then you'll add the sticker of the plant he's visiting and you aim to get all of them yeah so this is great for kids they can sort of follow spike to be around it's really fun i i don't think i've ever completed one and it's always been my goal we've gotten pretty far but this one is not that big actually so this one is completable this one i feel like it's attainable for you to do with your kids especially these are really fun when you're waiting for a genie plus reservation that you're waiting for if you just need something to do the kids will eat these up please give your children the opportunity to complete them they are so fun And if you want to do a different kind of hunt that doesn't involve actually formally collecting stickers and stuff, they do have on the Bridged Into World Showcase the Sights and Scents of Blossoms of Fragrance, it's called. And here is Amelia's favorite. It's where the butterfly topiaries are, and you can sort of follow six scent stations. So you essentially smell your way around. And there's six of the six stations there, so you can get six unique smells. These are nice. I have no qualms against these. It's just when you're a little child and there are rides at a theme park, you want to be going on the rides or doing a scavenger hunt, not smelling the six aromas. Yeah, for a kid, the... I think Spike the Bee would be more interesting. Yes. Because you get stickers and kids love stickers, usually. Take your own advice. I still want to do Spike the Bee. But we will smell our way around. <laughs> it sounds so if fun. nothing else, just to annoy you. It sounds fun. <laughs> and then again, you can also, they do have... What the, sounds fun? The smelling or Spike? Spike the bee. Oh, okay. No, no. Forget about the smelling. That sounds fine. But there is also the opportunity when you have the passport, so if you go to the different booths, 
you get stickers from that as well. But that requires buying something from all the booths. So. I don't know if they do that at this festival yeah. as they did it at. They do do it at Christmas and other times. They do it at Fruit and Wine. They've done it at Flower and Garden in the past, I believe. I have booklets from that. Oh, then maybe they do. And of course, but they have Kid we'll Cot see. always. Yes, so Kid more Cot. things for kids to do at many of the World Showcase that. Pavilion. It's weird because Epcot has so many of these, but Animal Kingdom is still the most famous for wilderness explorers. But. So we'll have more news on the Flower and Garden Festival coming up, including, as I said, uh, the Foodie Guide and the Garden Rock Concert Series. Now, the next question I have for you is between these two princess adventures, not princess adventures, between these two princess meet and greets, as I call them, which is your favorite? I would say Ariel because it's more, it's more guaranteed. Belle is very fickle in terms of knowing that you're going to meet her and knowing well, what Belle you're going to be. Well, Belle is not fickle. You mean the the attraction itself is? The attraction is very fickle, and I don't think it's as enjoyable if you don't get a certain... Well, I think if you have a kid, it's very, very easy for the child to get upset in the casting purposes. Because you are chosen by a cast member exactly. in the pre-show area. I think it's very, very easy for your kid to get upset and your kid to have a meltdown. I think with Ariel's Grotto, it's just it's I a have lot, never seen it's a any lot kids easier. getting upset or having meltdowns. Hello. Yeah, but you had a reverse <laughs> meltdown. You didn't want to be the star of the show until I told you you're the star of the show. And then you went, oh, okay, I guess this is good. I'm just saying if your kid is sensitive to these things, I'm sure there's been kids that are mad. Amelia took it as an insult that they picked her to Why be the she, beast. Who? <laughs> Looks at like a five year old girl and is like, Yeah, the beast. That's, but so that's offensive. what you thought. But what <laughs> they really were so doing is Oh, here's a cute kid who would make a great, you well, know, so essentially you are the star of the show from, yeah. the, from the people they select. That's what I'm saying. There is also a tip they cast you based on what you're doing in the pre show. So you have to, a lot of people don't know that. So if you want to be a certain role, Make yourself and the stand next one out. you are just there's other parts to the thing to yeah. the whole story the royal liege or whatever they yes. are part of the court which you were the next time yes I both was, times I was a guard I was cast both times but I will never forget my leading role as yeah. the beast. and I was just a guard standing on the far edges of the stage with another dad on the other side so. <laughs> So what get ready, dads. If you are picked as a guard, dad, don't worry. You really don't have to do much. You just have a little mask yeah. you hold in front of your face and a sword. So. But it is fun, and your kid will be excited that you are part of the game But all well. in, Yeah, it's definitely good to have two more princesses back in the park. Yeah. We love so that. that is the news for this week. We are getting close to our next day. We hope you are as well. We'll be reporting this. Still no news as of the recording. We will put it in the show notes if it comes up about... Who can ride Tron? Yes. So we will be there in the second week of March. We're hoping that uh, right up to about March twentieth or so. So it's coming. It's we're in in range yeah, for the just, pre rides. Hopefully, just about two months. It's getting pretty close to opening yeah, day. It's getting so. close. So we'll keep you posted as we hear that. And best of luck to you if you're going to try to get on as well. Thanks for listening. As always, follow along on social media at nineteen twenty three Main Street. We will see you again next week and have a magical day. Bye-bye.